Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over how to play Tennis DFS using the tools at your disposal um, on, on True DFS, and also some external tools and just kind of a process that I think that you can go back to to, uh, to build some good lineups. Now we're doing this on a really kind of a special slate. Um, it's the, the Australian Open is a couple of days in, and DraftKings decided to make a huge contest today where 50000 for first for the $20 buy-in. And that usually is not the case. And, and that's something also to consider you know, if you're getting involved in tennis. I mean, don't get used to the, the possibility of cashing for 50000 even if things go perfectly. Your usual tennis tournament on, DF, uh, on DraftKings um, in the big kind of lottery buy-in it's going to probably get generate either 5,000 or 10,000 for first. Now, again, I could hope that things improve where more people play, but that's usually what you should be expecting. And it's important to understand that because it should impact to some degree, how many lineups you play. Like for example, I mean, if it was a $20 buy-in and it was only paying, take it to an extreme, like a hundred dollars for first, right. You wouldn't want to put in 70 lineups, you know, whatever. Um, so you're normally dealing with an entry fee of about ten dollars, with a payout of about five to ten thousand. On this particular occasion, the big buy-in, well, the big lottery tournament is twenty dollars and fifty thousand for first. Nonetheless, a um, couple of things to think about um, with tennis is that it is a non-late swap sport which means is that once you put your lineups in and then the slate locks, that being the first match uh, starts, then all other matches are locked. You cannot change any of your lineups at all. And what that means is you do subject yourself to some degree of risk, um, but everybody else is subject to the same degree of risk. Um, that risk being that uh, your, your player could withdraw which is obviously a, a travesty. Kind of an equal travesty is that if your opponent withdraws, because if your opponent withdraws, most of the time, uh, you're not going to get a really good score. They're going to give you the score for a walkover, which is really not really good for, for daily fantasy sports. Let's just put it that way. Uh, now, if it's the first round of the tournament uh, and your opponent withdraws, then it could be good for you or first or second round, because then you get what they call a lucky loser that you still get to play. And usually you end up playing somebody worse. So you're locked in with your salary and usually you have a better chance of winning. Now it doesn't always work that way, but that's the case. But nonetheless, uh, it's important to know that it is a non late swap sport that you have to just put all your lineups in before the first lineup, uh, first match starts and then you're kind of up to the races. And the other thing is you normally will get the, the full slate done on that day. Sometimes you don't. Um, if there's a rain delay, if there's if it goes to darkness or something else happens, uh, it's sometimes possible that it, it spills into the next day. And that's just that's just the way it goes. Um, what you could do if you are, you know, sitting pretty in some of these contests, um, you could use the sports book to hedge against some of your exposure. And maybe for a different video, we'll talk about ways to do that. That might not be completely intuitive. But for now, that's just the way tennis works. You put your lineups in, and then you root. Okay. Um, speaking of which, how do you root? Well, um, well, two different ways. Now, if you want fantasy points, you're you're just you're just gonna have to use the DraftKings app. You know, DraftKings keeps track of the of the fantasy points as they are amassing. Okay. Um, and it's just like anything else. There's no live contest here. Actually, there is, but nobody's actually playing right now. But you'll see in here, if somebody were playing like here, this is a suspended match, suspended for now. And it just kind of updates point for point. It'll tell you, you know, all the fantasy points that you're, that you're accruing. But if that's not good enough for you and you want to, um, and, and you want to actually watch the matches, the best place to watch all the matches um, is on ESPN plus um, that, that usually, and that changes year to year sometimes, but the last couple of years, ESPN plus is where you've been able to get most of the action. In addition to that tennis channel um, is, is, is a good resource for 
some tournaments that ESPN Plus does not cover. So if you were going to play tennis and you want you know DFS and you want to have some fun, I would definitely recommend getting a subscription to both ESPN Plus and to um, and uh, Tennis Channel. Now that does not obviously track fantasy points, but you know I, you know if you want to watch the matches, that's the best way to do it. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is you do want to have as an updated list of guys that are withdrawing or girls that are withdrawing, even though you can't do anything about a pass lock. The last thing that you want is to just forget about your lineups. You put in too early. So there are a couple of ways you can check that, uh, you know, five to 10 minutes before lock. Number one is some, most of the time DraftKings will put in there that a guy's withdrawn. And you could also set your DraftKings thing to notify you. It's most of the time they'll update you. But usually a good idea is to, number one, check the Discord channel um, to see if one of us has put that information up there. But even better, if you want to be empowering, you, you'll subscribe to this Twitter site is actually really good. Entry list updates. So that will, as you'll see, this one updates when guys are, or gals are withdrawing from the tournaments. Okay. So this is a good resource to have at your disposal which you should check up on, you know, right up until lock if, if possible. Okay. So, okay. So those are kind of the, the mechanics, right? What, usually one day slate, uh, one time lock, no late swap. Uh, we talked about uh, using the, that Twitter account to check on these, on these things and ESPN plus and um, tennis channel are the best places to sweat um, along with DraftKings to get the fantasy points. All right. Um, so how do you come up with this stuff? Um, well, first of all, it's normally six, it's six, you know, six players, $50,000 salary. And they, they allow you to play uh, players that are going against each other. Right now, I, I'll, I'll make life kind of easy for you. I don't want to say 99% of the time, but an overwhelming percentage of the time you don't want to have um, players playing against each other. So, so the way scoring works, I mean, you just get too many points for a win and you get penalized too much for a loss to 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 benefit from from anything else except for having the winner. Um, so uh, that's the one thing. I wish DraftKings wouldn't even do this. You should be able to put here, you know, forbid opponents just in case people mess up, but nonetheless. Um, so that's the first thing. So you want to have an average of $8,333 per player. And you want to pick only, you know, people, you don't want to pick players from the same match. So how, how do you figure out who you're going to play, right, uh, using the true DFS tools? Now, one thing we don't do is get into all of the granular data. In other words, uh, there's so much that goes into projecting how well these guys are going to do as far as getting daily fantasy points. Um, you have to factor in, you know, what chances they have to win, Uh how many aces they got because all of these things are count towards their fantasy points. So here's an example. Here's one of the files I keep with all kind of the granular data and other sites. You know, this is from one site. Look at all the stuff that gets factored in it has what's the percent chance you win the, win the match. Uh, what, what percent chance you win in straight sets. Cause you get a bonus for that total amount of average sets. One sets lost. You get a, a bonus. If you have a six O like a bagel, you get 0.15, on average, that's how much Sweet Tack is going to get that. Um, total games won projected, games lost, how many aces projected. And you'll see that some players have rates to have more aces. So all of this is kind of like behind the scenes, granular data. It's factored into projecting how many fantasy points this player kind of, I don't want to say should get, but but quite possibly could get. You know what I mean? It's, it's considered a median outcome. They, they plot all the different possibilities of what the person could get based on his stats. And then they put the median, which is kind of the number in between the low and the highs. Right. Um, and that's what, they, that's what you start with. Now, again, you know, that's not predicting that's what they're going to score, but it's, it's at least a, a projection, right. Where you start with this. So what you're looking to do is to, is several things. You have to project who is going to score well, and then use your salary wisely to get as many total projected points as possible, 
right? This is really cutting down to the, you know, the bare bones of how to play daily fantasy sports is what's the best way to use that salary, okay? What is the best, most number of fantasy points you can come up with based on the salary that you've been afforded? So like, for example, if you have one, you know, one guy who's a, has, is a $10,000 salary and he's supposed to only get 40 fantasy points and you have another guy who's $6,000 salary and he's supposed to get 40 fantasy points, you obviously want to take the, 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 the cheaper guy because you use less salary so you can afford yourself other spots in the lineup for other players you know, to get more fantasy points. So it's kind of a, 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 a ongoing push and pull. I want more fantasy points, but I can't afford them, right? I want to save money, but then they're not going to get as many fantasy points. So what you have to do is figure out the most efficient use of your salary. So how do you do that? Okay. So there are several ways to do that. Most of them involve a computer, you know, or an Excel spreadsheet, which basically just says, okay, given all the projected points that you're giving all these guys, okay, what's the most fantasy points given your salary constraints that you can come up with and put it in a six person lineup. Um, so there, there, there are algorithms and there are spreadsheets that, that, that kind of do this for you. And those are called optimizers. And we're going to talk about how to do that. Um, we, we'll provide the tools for you to do so, so you don't have to create one on your own. Okay. But the other way to do it is just kind of by hand. And that's, that's sort of fun to do. Um, it's not always going to be accurate, but it is sort of fun to do. Um, so let's start with, let's, let's build a line of using the tools on TrueDFS, show you a lot of different ways to do that. And then we'll talk about how to build more lineups than that. So let's just start here. So here we're on TrueDFS. And the first thing I will show you is where the tennis uh, content is. Now you'll see right now, tennis is kind of like that. That bastard child, right? It doesn't even have its own, you know, its own sport, right? It's got to go into others, right? Or something like that. More sports, all right? So it's in more sports. So we go to tennis. Now, if there were a video here, it would be under tennis videos. As a matter of fact, there it is. I actually did one on March 15, 2002. So if we did a, here's a couple of other tennis videos that you could look at. This is actually a good one to look at here. This All Things Tennis with Matthew Newell of Big Data Tennis. Um, just to give you an idea of how tennis works in general. But in any case, if there were a new video, which by the way, the video I'm making right now is probably going to be here um, by the time you see this, you would look at videos. So one thing you could do is just look at my video and see who to bet, but that's really not what I want you to do. But you could do that. What we're talking about here is this part that says tennis projections. So every day that I'm playing tennis, I load this table which has these this this information so it's got the name of every player their salary their projected fantasy points like how many fantasy points we are projecting them to get and we talked about that earlier and then some other things so this is points per dollar so what that means is that when we talked about value and 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 how important it is to have a, a low salary for just the same amount of fantasy points. What point per dollar does is kind of rank these players in a kind of a value oriented way. It basically divides salary by fantasy points plus kind of a multi, you know, 100 multiplier. So if you divide 9,000 by 67 or whatever, you're going to get actually 7.52 with the adjustment. And we do that for every single player. So we give them kind of this point per dollar ranking to give you an idea of of how likely it is we could play these guys and still get within the salary cap, you know? Um, so that's this points per dollar thing. And you can sort this over here by lower or higher and the higher, the better. Okay? Now this other thing here, sheets value score, this is kind of my way of adjusting points per dollar for the higher, the higher scoring players. Um, I don't want to get too much into this for this video, but let's just say that it's much more important to get a lot of fantasy points than it is to be a cheap player. In other words, if there was a player, let's take it to the extreme that had was only cost you a hundred and got say five fantasy points. Well, that's five times value. That's all right. 
But wouldn't you rather have a guy that's 15,000 that will give you, you know, 150 fantasy points or something like that? You know, because you do want to get the most fantasy points total within your salary constraint. So what this does, Sheets value score, is it adjusts for, you know, being just being a good player, you know, having a good projection. It does, I think, a little bit better job of ranking them than points per dollar. So you can rank them here. You have this little toggle. And you can rate your players here. Here. Now, ownership, all this means is how likely it is that that other people are going to be playing this player in the lineups. And and when you're playing GPPs and big, you know, contests, this becomes a really big deal because um, if you have a good play, that's great. But if everybody else is playing it, you're not really going to get anywhere in this contest. You know, you've got to play guys that not uh, yeah, that other people are not necessarily playing. And, you know, so so what you're looking for is not just good plays, but kind of almost good plays that a lot of people are not going to be playing. Like, I want to give you just a quick summary. So look at Rafael Nadal. So he is projected to only be owned by about 10% of lineups. And yet he projects just as well as some of these other guys. So what you probably want to do is between all these other guys that are kind of the same metrics, you want to play the guy with the lower ownership because you're getting more leverage on other people that are not playing. So that's what ownership is. So how do you do this? How, how do you create a lineup with this information? So we're going to go from like kind of the raw way to do it. And then we're going to go to the to two different ways to use an optimizer to do so. And this is just to build one line and then we'll do multiple lines. So the first thing that I would recommend that you do to try to do this is sort these guys by point per dollar. Okay. Um, and, and I know I said sheets value score, but in tennis, it's just as good most of the time to use point per dollar um, as opposed to other sports, but we'll get to that some other time. So what you're trying to do here is we've rated by point per dollar. Then we want to pick the top six guys that can fit in this lineup where you have to average only 83.33 per player. Okay. So what I would do if you didn't want to use an optimizer is just start with the lowest priced guy that you see up here. So Lloyd Harris. Well, you know, you can also, you could just, you just run the top six just to give you an idea of, of what, what you need to do here. Um, okay. So let's put all these guys in Hercas, Nishigoa, Keys. We got to remember that. So Hercas, Nishigoa, Keys. Much, again, this is, I don't care if this is like basic for some of you. This is like really important for those who have never done this before. Then Corda, Harris, Lynette. Corda, Harris, Lynette. Okay, so these are the top rated guys by point per dollar. Let's just put all the, well, where's the problem? We went over the salary, right? What this means is that we've got to save $2,700 in salary. And, you know, and this is what makes this fun. This is what makes it hard. You know, where do I want to save? I picked the top six rated point per dollar plays. So one thing you could do is you, you eyeball this and you look for the next cheap guy. So you see Maria at 7,800. She's the top rated of like the cheaper guys. And maybe what you could do is swap her for one of these more expensive ones. Okay, that's one thing you could do. So let's try that. So let's take keys out and put in Maria. So keys out and we'll put in Maria. So now we're only 1100 out of the, out of there. All right. So, so we're making some progress here. We're making some progress. So now let's see what's the next cheap one. Um, ooh, Bronzetti is 7,400. So how much do we need to save? 1100. So we put her in. Instead of say Nicosia, so we put in Maria instead of Nicosia. Then, wait, 
was it Maria? What was her name again? No, Bronzetti, right? Bronzetti, sorry. So we put in Bronzetti. Now we're fully within the salary cap, and this, this lineup might actually be pretty good. Literally, just like that. Now you'll notice that there's $300 remaining salary. So what that should mean to you instinctively is maybe we could do a little better. Maybe we could spend another 300 and maybe get a few more fantasy points. So we can kind of eyeball this a little bit. So instead of, say, I don't know, any of these, what if we want to spend up a little bit? Corda, Lynette. So we'll go back here. Corda's 9,200. Do we get rid of keys before? No, we get rid of Nicosia. Do we keep keys? No, we got rid of keys. But now that we have extra money to spend, we could go back and get her again and give up Corda. So we'll get rid of Corda. And then we'll play keys. And there you go. And you can build a lineup literally just like that. And we have not even used an optimizer at all. What we've just used the projections and just basically did them by hand and picked good point per dollar plays. And we threw this in here. And I think this lineup is, is perfectly reasonable. Okay. That's one thing you can do. The next thing you can do is use an optimizer to build your lineups. By the way, you have to put this in because if this wins and we didn't have it, the, the tennis gods will be very upset. All right. So now we'll go back to this projections screen here. So what if we didn't want to do that? What if we wanted to actually have a computer do it for us and, and make sure that it's we're getting the optimal result out of these projections? Well, there are two tools. The first thing I want to look at is the True DFS lineup builder. So you go here and you go to tennis lineup builder. And from this point, this is looks a little confusing, but what this allows you to do is put your own projections in to a this computer or the software and it will build the lineup for you now we have it saved to load automatically from uh from sheets so let's put these in when you click on load from sheets it already loaded all of these uh these players now, what you could do, if you like really wanted to play somebody, you would click lock or exclude him or whatever. But here, you just went right it, it load everything for you. Now, this one says allow the opponent. We don't want to do that, so we'll uncheck that. And let's see, generate like the top lineup. And let's see. LFG. Put it right in there. And it built the lineup for us. And that is tells you what he what projected points, what salary, what what the projected ownership of that entire lineup is together. And just using these true DFS tools, you could build a really, really nice lineup that way. Okay. Um, on the other hand, let's say you wanted to use a different, a different optimizer. Um, where you would go into say, so we have to now introduce you to SaberSim. Now, SaberSim is a more advanced optimizer. Um, and if you are a premium subscriber, you have access to that as well. And in a perfect world, so you would go to Tools, SaberSim. And we have all the different sports on here. So you would click on Tennis. Um, and normally what would happen is, is that the true DFS um, projections would go right here to SaberSim, but they just haven't updated yet. But you could do the same thing here, okay? You could just, um, we'll pre pretend they're in here, a couple of changes. And you could build as many lineups as you want. Now, again, this is, I don't want to get into too much about true DFS, about the, about the sa how Saberson works. That's for another thing, but you would put in, you know, that'll be for another tutorial. Um, maybe one line up here. You want to pick what type of tournament you're in. Like if you're playing that tournament, we just, we just talked about when there's going to be a zillion people in it, you probably want to pick 150 max. 
and we'll play, um, oops. We don't want to allow opposing players, let me see something. Um, so you would click on build lineups, one lineup, and Saberson will build it for you. Now, I'm just curious to see what the difference is between the one Saberson builds and the one that, um, that we built with our builder. Let's take a look. And this has completely different players. Uh, and the reason for that is because Saber Sim, they build their lineups not just trying to give you the optimal results. Um, in addition to that, they're using different projections. Okay. Um, you can rate these by Saber score, by projected score. Yeah, I think that's the difference is that they're using their own projections as opposed to ours. And if mine were in there, um, uh, these would have populated. As a matter of fact, I mean, not to flex or whatever, but you could do this manually as well. Like you could upload the tennis projections manually, what I just did, and then I could do the same thing. You could build one lineup using my projections, and the, the, I, I still don't think it's going to end up being the same lineup because, again, this is – Sabersim is building not necessarily for the optimal result. It's building accounting for ownership fade and, and just really just trying to get a little more wild with, with the with, with the upside. Um, it's much less conservative, much more conservative. But even still, you still have is it actually is very close, right? To what we did with the uh, with the true DFS optimizer. Um, I see a couple of, uh, of of familiar faces in here. Um. So then we'll go back to the um, to the uh, to the lineup builder, and this is something we added this year as well. Yes. So here, when you go back to that lineup builder, let's say you wanted to build more than one lineup. Let's say you want to build 10 or 20 or whatever. You go through the same thing. We upload the sheets. Now, we will not allow the opponent. Let's build 20 lineups. Boom. We'll hit LFG. Let's see how quickly it goes. It's taken a while. Um, sorry about that. This is stalling a little bit. So we're not we're not going to demo the the true DFS um, uh, multi lineup builder, although it does work most of the time. Sorry about that. We will go back here and we will redo the Saber Sim builds and we'll do multiple lineups. And again, that's very easy. You know, again, we just uploaded the same information as before. But instead of clicking one, we'll click, you know, as many as you want, like 150 if you want. Just click start build. And again, we're, we won't go into the full Saberson details and how all this works yet. That'll be a different, I guess that's a different, that's a different uh, tutorial. But just to show you again, all this is available on TrueDFS, the TrueDFS lineup builder. And if you're a Saberson subscriber within TrueDFS, then there's a link right there to do that. And then like anything else, you'll download the lineups and then you'll upload them to DraftKings or whatever. Um, so, um, I, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, so if you wanted to look at today's slate, um, you know, you, you would, these would be the guys you probably want to play, 
you know, but again, projections will change. And I, again, withdrawals will happen and things like that. Um, but that's essentially how to use the true DFS tools um, to build your tennis lineups. Um, hopefully this stays as uh, a link uh, available all the time. And uh, as we make improvements, we'll probably upgrade all this. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.